And from here, it's the quadratic formula. Uh, we're expecting two answers from the quadratic formula. Uh, this problem gets x is equal to 0 0.084 or minus 4.92. Well, it can't be the second one because that's going to be giving me negative concentrations. That just wouldn't make sense. So it's got to be the positive value. I don't think there's any, as you've seen me do in chapter 16, any nice assumption to make this easier. You just got to do the quadratic on this one. So you would, uh, for our case, you use 484 so make sure you gain practice in this. I'm not doing it in class, really. You multiply through by here, by 4.84. Move it all to one side, use the quadratic. Any questions? Um, can you go if you get um, two positive numbers for x? Sometimes you will get two positive numbers for x, but it will cause this value to be negative. So one of these numbers will cause one or more of these in the E-line to be negative values. The one here that causes an E-line to have a negative value is the one you throw out. Is that okay? But yeah, it's quite likely to get two positives here. That's not unusual. Yeah? On the homework that was Mastering Chemistry, we had a situation in which we had a, I think it was like a 4x cubed or something like that, that we really couldn't use the quadratic formula, so I had to do something funky with my calculator. Um, what do you do? Are you, is that going to be a situation we're not going to encounter on a test? On an exam, no. You'd get as most uh, quadratic. Okay. Not a... Uh, what is that, a cubic equation? Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't get one of those. Okay. Not an exam. Just for practice on a homework. There's various ways you could do those. The easiest way, I think, is the iteration. You just keep plugging in. You get a value out, you re-plug it in, keep on going, and so, forth, so on and so forth. Okay. But uh, if you're, I guess if you have a computer program that solves cubics, that's another way you could do it. Okay, so this is x just to finish the problem. So that's x. Uh, this is these two concentrations, so I'm going to erase this part for a minute, or completely, forever. Uh, so, concentration of H N, oh, H C, O N H 2 is going to be the 0 0.0861 minus 0 0.084 and then the concentration of NH3 is going to equal the concentration of CO which is equal to X which is equal to 0 0.084 and then the other value is 171 oh no what is the difference between those two? Yeah, 0 0.0021. 0 0.0021. Okay. Oh, it's 0.0021. Oh, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay. Uh, and, okay. Oh, we're using molarity. Mm -hmm. But when you subtract, I'm using this, oh, this subtraction right here? Yeah. This comes. From that right there. That equation. So this is all in molarity. Or most um, why not like 0.0861 over? Oh, this, this divided by this is this value. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So we have to use the molarity when we are trying to figure out the concentrations of every single. When I use the ice table, I always use molarity. It, it goes back and forth. Like in this question, it actually does use molarity. Another question uses moles. Uh, that will usually work in chapter 15. It just won't work later. 
So that's why I encourage you just to use molarity, it's easier. But if you want to go back and forth, that's up to you. And that would be considered correct on the But we're going to get a different answer. You shouldn't. You have to m multiply through by the volume again. Or divide by the volume again. It should always give you the same answer. Definitely. So if you find one, we can look at it. Yeah. When you get small cones and I was checking for the X in, in two cases, yeah. um, I got like, um, some people got like five, you know, the five difference from KC. What do you mean five difference? I don't know how old they get. Okay, when you plug in X into the whole equation, it's supposed to be four, 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 four. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Instead of like, um, like, something I'll get like one five difference, or like when you plug in one, I'll get five difference. There will probably be some rounding error. You're plugging this x back into the KC equation. This x right here. Back into KC, sometimes you don't get this number exactly. It should be, depending on how many digits, so this is two sig figs. So then I'll only get two sig fig answers here. So I could get like 4.9 or 4.7. That would be unusual. If I carried off more sig figs here, then I get more sig figs here. So it just depends how many sig figs you find here. It also depends if you make an assumption while doing this. We didn't in this problem. I just wrote it down from what the text is. <coughs> is that OK? But you could get some difference. If it's significantly different, there's probably a mistake that was made somewhere. Yeah. If the difference is more than the sig figs you have, like two here, if it's more than the second place, like if you got six, that'd be bad. Okay. So what do they want us to do? Convert it to pressure now? Uh, yeah. In this case, what they want you to do is add all these values mm -hmm. at equilibrium. And then you're going to use, where's my chalk? Okay. You're going to use the equation P equals CRT. So you're going to, C is going to be the sum of all these values. So. goes into there. R is your ideal gas law constant. T is given. It's 400 Kelvin. And so when you solve this, they get 5.58 uh, atmospheres from people. Is that okay? Yeah. You get the basic idea. Now you have X, you just add the values up and times by R and T. Does that help for this problem? Is it okay?